when they cut the cord with Tony Parker, there's only one reason to do that. You are coaching a player who has more power than you do as the coach. <laughs> what Melo could do for the Rockets is what he refused to do for OKC. It's great that Tony Parker bought in. It's great that Manu bought in. But you can't expect every young player in the NBA, especially Kawhi Leonard, who is the youngest MVP of a finals ever, 22 years old. All Kawhi Leonard's done his whole life is had doubters and prove him wrong. Kawhi, not LeBron. Kawhi, not MJ. Kawhi, not Magic. Kawhi, not Burt. Youngest finals MVP ever. And all Pop wants to tell you is, get over yourself. Well, maybe Kawhi Leonard's saying, Coach, I was just getting into myself. When they cut the cord with Tony Parker, there's only one reason to do that. And it's because he burned his bridge to Kawhi Leonard. But for, for however it happened, and I'm going to say it one more time, I believe Tony Parker was 100% correct when he said his injury was 100 times worse than Kawhi Leonard's because he did rupture and Kawhi had a bruise, a thigh bruise. Somebody just keeps throwing out there, well, he, he might sign long-term with the uh, Sixers. He might can sign long-term with the Clippers. He might sign long-term with the Celtics or this or that. They don't mention anything about him returning to the Spurs, mm -hmm. but what if the Spurs are clearing the deck because all these guys, the Clay Possible. Thompson, the Kevin Possible. Durant, all these guys are going to be available next year. Kawhi's not trying to join some super basketball team. He's not trying to join some organization. He's just trying to go to Los Angeles. He doesn't have stipulations. Who's the coach? Who's the general manager? Who are the other players? He just wants to go to Los Angeles, that being the Clippers or the Lakers. So um, I wouldn't read too much into this. I believe there's a lot of things that people might want to get Philadelphia or someone from the East involved because they don't think that Pop will trade him to the Lakers or trade him to the West. We also have to remember that just four days ago, where the Sixers were at was not even including faults in a trade for Kawhi Leonard. Mm -hmm. And so my my guess is that the Sixers not wanting to include faults, the Celtics not even wanting to include Jalen Brown, set the tone for San Antonio or the Lakers to revisit San Antonio and say, we are your best option, and maybe once again, not give them the offer the Spurs want. If I'm Luke Walton, I don't love it that I'm not invited to that initial recruitment meeting, that, that pitch meeting. And number two, I am stunned and disappointed in Luke Walton that it appears he's desperately calling around the league seeking advice on how to deal with LeBron James. I thought Luke was more of his own man. In one hand, Le coaching LeBron can be easy because you know what, Skip? He'll always show up. He'll always be prepared. You know he'll put the time in. That's you true. You know he'll give you your maximum effort. I give and you you're that. you're never going to have to get that call mm -hmm. saying LeBron is out this time of night. LeBron is doing mm -hmm. that. When you have him, it's championships or bust. And everybody can't coach under that kind of scru scrutiny mm -hmm. and stress. Everybody can't play under that type of scrutiny and stress. And so when you factor all that in, that he's on your team, he's a dominating presence. It's going to be tough. I think it's a great idea for Luke because coaching LeBron James is going to be like unlike anything he's ever experienced as a coach. Obviously, with the Lakers, there's a bunch of young kids. When he had Golden State, you know, they just nobody there wielded the power of LeBron James or and, and mm -hmm. even had his personality. Mm -hmm. With dealing with LeBron James, you at you are coaching a player who has more power within the organization than you do as the coach. Luke Walton can earn LeBron's trust, but you gotta earn it. It's not gonna be given. And this is and this is a tough guy. This is, look, there's no question LeBron knows more of a basketball than Luke Walton. There's no question whatsoever. Like, so he's going to have to go in there like Spolstra did and prove to him he's going to help him out as a coach. There's a lot of personalities to deal with for Luke Walton, but more than anything, I think it's the savvy, the cerebral way that both LeBron and Rajon Rondo look at the game, think about the game, and mm -hmm. they will not for a second hesitate to challenge Luke with what his game plan is, schematically what's happening, how he is handling the game. So I think that will be a tremendous challenge for Luke Walton, who hasn't had that type of pressure to win yet.
When Boogie got signed by the Warriors, the world freaked out. And we said, take a deep breath, folks. The guy's not coming back till March. Who knows how long he'll play. The Pelicans got better when he left. There, I, My theory is Steve Kerr saw how much Houston, P.J. Tucker, pushed him around and thought, you know what? We can be way too finesse. We need an edge in this locker room beyond Draymond. There's an old NBA theory that I'm pretty sure Steve Kerr knows all too well because I think it started in San Antonio, and it's called the one knucklehead theory. And that theory goes that you can have one knucklehead on a basketball team, a pro basketball team, but you can't have two because two will tear you all apart. Boogie knows going to Golden State, they're not depending on him to win. They won without him. They'll win again without him. Plus, he's on a one-year prove-it deal. Not only a prove-it deal to say, I'm healthy, guys, I'm 25 and 13 again, but also, I'm not that guy in the locker room anymore. When you play with great players, it's just so easy. People say, you know something? This game's so much easier. No, it's not. Because there's less shots, there's less glory to be spread around, and that stat sheet at the end of the day, when they look at that, which all the players do, he's going to have a problem justifying his decision because they are the peripheral, the, the huge Trend favorite favorites to, to build a win. Boogie signed with the Warriors knowing who's on the roster, knowing they're back-to-back -back champions, knowing he's coming off an injury. Also knowing, I would imagine, from his representation that DeMarcus, it is not about your points and rebounds and assists this year. It's about how healthy you are at the end of the year and are there reports that you are bad for the locker room. Melo's going to have to accept I'm not the superstar anymore. I'm going to have to be a role player, maybe even come off the bench, or he's going to go out like Allen Iverson. Iverson couldn't accept that role, and his career ended maybe prematurely because he wanted to still be the superstar. He plays iso ball in an era where ball movement is everything. Now, I don't like him. I agree with you, Chris. I don't really like him anywhere, but if I had to put him somewhere, I'm going to put him in Houston because Trevor Ariza left. He could step right into Trevor Ariza's spot. Carmelo looked more and more out of shape as the year went on last year in Oklahoma City, and I thought they could utilize him as that spot up shooter and in the end he can't even do that to Chris's point because you can't have him on the other end of the floor because he guards nobody and even Oklahoma City finally said that was a ton of money they just said we're going to eat this. LeBron and Chris Paul have had numerous opportunities to play with him and have done a hard pass on all of them. Here's the latest story Carmelo Anthony rumors Chris Paul's urging the Rockets to acquire him. You think maybe the agents leading that story because Chris Paul's had opportunities to play with him and LeBron's had opportunities to play with him and D Wade's had opportunities to play with him and they haven't. What Melo could do for the Rockets is what he refused to do for OKC, which is provide bench scoring. Like if he if he could be a guy that you can three minutes a quarter in the first half run the offense through three minutes in the, end of the first quarter, three minutes in the, end of the third quarter, and then be a piece the rest of it, then he, there is at least some upside there. The reality is Melo is, in the playoffs, was abysmal. When you are a volume scorer since AAU days, Carmelo Anthony is always one, in the, in the high school rankings, one of the best players, college, one of the best players, straight jump shooter. When you're playing three to five minutes, you can't score in the same capacity. So they, he doesn't know how to be a role player. 